Well, yes, a very significant day in Ireland where they overturned that no vote uh, delivered last year in a referendum on the Lisbon Treaty and delivered a resounding yes, as you said in your introduction. And uh, here in Brussels, as in Dublin, there's been significant relief at that result because it means now that uh, the process of ratifying the Lisbon Treaty moves one step closer to completion. Just two countries remain to ratify that poll, the Poles and the Czechs. But uh, to try and get a bit of a measure on the significance of today. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Jerzy Buzek, who is the president of the European Parliament. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, what do you think is the significance of this Irish yes vote? Uh, good evening. Well, it's uh, really good news. Good for Ireland, good for Europe, good for European Parliament. We will have more power. It means more democracy in the EU. We will be more efficient in the EU. Uh, on the level of uh, Council of Ministers and we can respond easier for such a questions like climate, energy issue, like unemployment rate, uh, immigration. You talk about there about a lot about the institutions here in the EU and that's what this has all been about in many ways, reform of the way these institutions work, but what does it actually mean for the citizens of the EU? Because that's the thing people talk about, the disconnect between the institutions here in Brussels and the people themselves. More contact with the institutions because uh, national parliaments will influence also our legislation on the level of the EU. It's a big difference. And also we in the European Parliament, we will have power for co-decision process. More than 90% of legislation will be with connection with the European Parliament and we will contact also uh, because uh, it's a really possibility to uh, send information for European Parliament because more than 700 members of Parliament was elected straight away directly for our regions all over the Europe. is only one such institution in Europe. When we talk about the Lisbon Treaty, of course, being the yes vote in Ireland, two countries still have to ratify the Polish government, the Polish uh, uh, government and also the Czech government. Now, you're a Pole yourself, the first Polish person to be president of the European Parliament. Uh, what's going to happen there? How soon will the Poles ratify and how big a challenge is the Czech non-ratification yet? I wouldn't be worried about uh, the Polish uh, president because he will sign probably very quickly. I'm going to Prague uh, in six days on Friday to meet uh, Czech authorities and to talk about possibility to sign as quick as possible. Okay, Jerzy Buzek, thank you very much for joining us. Well, as we touched upon there, most of the attention now will move to the Czech Republic and uh, we can expect significant pressure, I think, on the government there to push ahead with ratification as soon as possible. Back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, uh, Dominic Hughes there in Brussels. We can now speak to Fiacro Lewin, who's a political candidate uh, in the recent uh, European elections, joins us from our Belfast uh, studio. Fiacro Lewin, are, are you surprised by the vote? Uh, a mere 18 months ago, the Irish people said a resounding no. Absolutely, and I think it does go back to the issue of the democratic deficit in Europe. Um, Eight, 16 months ago we, we voted no to the Lisbon Treaty and since then there have been explicit attempts uh, fr from the European Commission and from the Irish government and from all the political parties to overturn what was a consensus. Now it's an insult to those of us who voted no and there's a real sense of growing disenfranchisement in Ireland because of this result. People feel uh, in Donegal and other places where we voted no uh, disempowered and that the European Union is not listening to the citizens and not not addressing our concerns about the, this very da dangerous direction for the European Union. Well, well Fiacro Lewin, what then explains uh, this resounding yes vote? I mean, uh, what, what accounts for that change in opinion uh, so quickly over a short period of time? There were concerted efforts in, in the media. The Broadcasting Commission uh, did away with the equal, equal time for, for both sides, for yes and no. Um, there was swift both standards of slander in the media where the likes of Michael O'Leary called anyone who opposed the treaty, branded them as a loser which is just an insult. Um, so it looks like we're going to have Ryanair standard democracy from yeah. now on in Europe. And um, I heard Jose Manuel Barroso talk about more efficient decision making. And it is indeed telling that Jose Manuel Barroso and possibly the new president, Flair, um, are the people who took the, decisions to, the decision to overtake the European consensus against the Iraq war. And this is a great cause of concern for, for all of us. And I would like to take the opportunity to apologize to the people of France and Netherlands and all the other European European 
people who did not get a chance to vote on this very troubling treaty.